We're back here on the Believe in NFL Draft Prospects podcast. I'm Joe DeLeon, joined by my co-host and good friend, Ryan Roberts. Today, we've got centers. We've transitioned from talking about the NFL Combine. We've had a couple different things that we've had stops to discuss, but we are in full ranking mode right now, man. We are going full charge ahead as we're going to do centers, and we're going to start doing these position rankings a little bit more rapid fire as we eventually eventually we'll do some team by team analysis for who each team should be selecting and some of the targets that they should potentially have but as i said today we are doing centers for today's episode we did guards we've done linebackers we've done running backs make sure you go check those out so you don't miss them ryan are you excited to talk about centers today it, it's actually got a, some decent talent at the top for the top these top fives i think there's uh there's some pretty talented players in the mix. No, it, it's actually it's actually a really talented like top five to six players in this class, in my opinion. It's just the fact that it tapers off after that so quick, man. Like if yeah. if you want a starter, like a no doubt starter for one to two years in their career, you need to get one of these top three to four, in my opinion. Like you need to get one of those guys. Otherwise, mm-hmm. you're gonna be a little bit of a tough situation. So like I like the top of the center class. I just think the depth isn't quite as good as maybe we've seen over the last couple years but there's some there's some names at the top man that i would want starting for my football team in the next level for sure yeah i i think that all these top five guys in the way that i rank them i'd be willing to plug them in as as starters at some point or another uh ryan do you want to start us off i usually start us off with our the the first guy but do you want to go first i can go first man because i actually um i threw a little bit of a curveball in here a little bit of a wrench at number Mm -hmm. five so after number four, I'm just looking at my list. I'm just like, man, there's not really another center that I love like in this class. There's not. But there is a kid that I evaluated actually pretty recently over the last few days who plays tackle in college. But I'm watching his film. I'm just like, man, that's a center. Like He just moves like a center. He's got kind of that quick explosiveness out of his stance. He's got a nice movement skills. But he's not the biggest guy of all time. And I'm talking about Braden Daniels from Utah is the guy that I'm talking about who's starting left tackle for oh. Utah. Joe, six foot four and an eighth, 294 pounds. Smaller kid, man. He's definitely got more of an interior yeah. build. He's only got 33 inch arms as well. So like not incredible length, although his reach is decent. But he went to the combine, man. He ran 499 in the 40. He's a really smooth athlete. I just don't think he has the body type or the profile to play on the outside. I think he's an interior player. And when you ask me what are some of the important things that I need from a center? It's quickness out of the stance, the ability to work up field shoulders, and to really kind of get to the second level. That's Brayden Daniels to me, man. Like, he's got a lot of traits that I look like, and I'm like, that kid could be a guard, could be a center. But as a center, especially in like an outside zone heavy type of scheme, I think Brayden Daniels has a lot of traits to really get excited about on day three, man. I think he's got a lot of upside to that position. You're absolutely right. I would not have guessed that it was Braden Daniels. I have Braden Daniels ranked as a guard and he was out of out, outside of my top five for guards. I think with him, he's a very developmental player. Yes. He is somebody who, as you talked about, isn't really fully as far along as he could be. I think physically for him, I see center. Regardless, I think he bumps inside. I don't know if it's at center uh, or at guard. But I saw some issues with strength. Yep. That was what concerned me. But the movement skills, yeah, absolutely. Well, I think that he's got all of that. And, and I think that he does have a developing power profile, obviously. Like, he's not the strongest guy in the world, which is why I hesitated him as guard a little bit. Because, I mean, guard, you have to be a little bit more proficient with power in tight spaces. I don't think that's yeah. Brandon Daniel. So, like, if he was a guard for a team at the next level, I think teams would have to, like, really have the long term out there, right? Like, long term, we got to put a, another 15 to 20 pounds in this kid, get that power profile working. I think as a center, man, like, yeah, he needs to get a little bit stronger still, but, like, he's got that wiry frame where I'm like, you put five pounds on him and you're in a very heavy inside zone, outside zone type of sch- scheme where you're asking your centers to get up to the second level. That's Brandon Daniels to me, man. I like him. He would be my. The, the guys above him are more known commodities in this class. Brandon mm-hmm. Daniels is my guy. Like, if I need a developmental center on day three, a guy that maybe could play a double, different, couple different positions, but also develop into maybe my future starter at center, Brandon Daniels will be my pick, man. He's my developmental center in this class. I like the outlook there because I think the aspect of this that makes him more of a center than a guard is what you said, where he's not even 300 pounds. And he does have a little bit of a light 
in a way a wiry frame yes. for an offensive lineman. So yeah, no, I I like that. I, that's a unique perspective, and now it kind of has me rethinking. Not if he go in my top five, but if I should rank him as a center instead of a guard, because I, I think that's a good point. I like to steal things from you, Ryan. Yes. Um, I'm you're, you're a smart man. Make... You're a smart man then, man. Smart man. I'm curious who didn't make your top five, though, oh. but I would like to start off my top five with Jared Patterson, who that's, that, I have as that's my That's who th- didn't make my top five, so there you go. Yeah. That was who I thought was going to be the case. So Jared Patterson does make my fifth spot here on my center rankings. Look, he was a very complicated evaluation and someone overall who I think has had a bit of a tumble during this draft yeah. cycle since the beginning of the season. It I argue negatively impacted him making a transition to guard because he's not a guard. He doesn't have the length to play guard. He doesn't have the movement skills to play guard. He doesn't have the flexibility. He's a better center. But I don't really know what version of Jarrett Patterson I'm getting at center. Well, we saw some some reps at the Senior Bowl. I thought he looked pretty clean. Yep. I thought he looked more comfortable at center. I think asking him to block down on guys, he's just not going to be able to get there. But what we know with Jarrett Patterson is that he's a really smart player. He plays with good angles. Uh, he plays with good technique. Where I am halted and why I have him graded – I think I want to say he's probably going to be a little bit outside of my top 150, just on the outside of my top 150. Um, I, I just struggle with the strength or not the strength, rather the flexibility and the ability to move easily and to be able to reach and make certain blocks because of uh, some of those issues. He, uh, man, it really pained me about Jared Patterson. Cause you remember when we did locked on Irish a couple years ago, Joe, like I really liked Jared Patterson yeah. and Jared Patterson had some, had some fans early on in this process, you know, when he was a redshirt sophomore at that point. Just simply, man, where we are, like, he's had a lot of injuries in his career, you know, a lot of durability stuff. And I feel like that zapped him of athleticism because when he was younger, man, I was like, that kid is a outside zone, inside zone type of center, a guy that can work the second level. He just lost it, man. Like, he just doesn't have that man. athleticism anymore. He's now – Went from a really talented mover inside to, I think, a guy that is going to make his living off of being a ability to back up multiple spots, kind of an alignment versatile player and a swing player. That's kind of what I see with Patterson now. Yeah, I I hope that he can be a starter, and I think that he still, if we go off of the center tape, he is possibly a starting center, possibly, but it's a big if. I just think that the four guys I have graded ahead of him are a lot more explosive yes. and are much better with their power and can move a lot easier, which is why I'm excited about the remaining guys. So who is your number four on this list? I have Luke Whipler from Ohio State. Measured in 6'2", 5'8", 303 pounds, 31 and 5'8". So he's a smaller center. Like He doesn't have a ton of length to him, and he's sub 6'3". But the thing that I really like about Luke Whipler is he is a really nice athlete, man. He can move laterally well takes good angles as far as his ability to cut off blocks from the front side or from the back side. Little bit scheme specific in my opinion, right? Like a bunch of gap power schemes aren't going to love Luke Whipler at center, but for teams that really, really like to get offensive linemen on the move, working in space a ton and really hone in on lateral quickness. I like Luke Whipler. I think he's a starting level p- potential player. It's just, he's a little more scheme specific than maybe a couple guys a little mm. higher on the list for me. But he's a good football player, man. Power profile needs to continue to improve. But as far as just athletes on the list, Whipler can move, man. He can really move. Before we continue on with this video, I just want to tell you folks about an exciting new partnership that we have with this channel with Underdog Fantasy. Ever since I joined, I've been having so much fun. There are so many different exciting games that make watching games during the offseason more exciting. I'm not the biggest basketball fan, but it has made it way more entertaining since I found Underdog Fantasy. And my favorite game to play so far, which I think you should try out, is Pick'em. It is so easy to play. Just pick higher or lower on your favorite player stats, and you can win up to 20 times your money in a single night. Underdog keeps it simple with their easy-to-use website and mobile apps. Pick between two and five players to fill out your Pick'em slip, get every pick right, and take home some cold, hard cash. Use code HACK, H-A-C-K. Hack, like the name of this channel, use code HACK to get your first deposit doubled up to $100 by Underdog. Go sign up. You won't regret it. You're going to have a blast. Check out Underdog Fantasy. I also want to tell you folks about our other reoccurring sponsor that we have on this channel, that being Bet Online. 
betonline.ag, which has all the updated odds, news, and anything for sports betting. It's my go-to source for when I want to be betting specifically on games. I love betting on college basketball or the NBA, uh, especially again during the offseason. Always looking for more fun ways to be uh, focused in on some of these other sports. It's betonline.ag and use promo code BELIEVE50. It's promo code BELIEVE50 to get 50% welcome bonus on your first deposit. Bet online where the game starts. Yeah, I'm a huge fan of Luke Whipler from Ohio State. I'm going to come out there and say that. We'll see where he fits on my rankings in a second. I don't see a lot of negatives in a Luke Whipler's game. You hit the nail on the head with easy mover. Um, I think he's a great athlete. I think he is a really, really good athlete for a center. Yep. And sometimes we always assume that the best athletes are going to be playing tackle, but sometimes these guys that lack length, you put them at center, you let them go to work. He plays with great angles that you said, and he moves with an efficiency that puts him in a position to take advantage of those angles. I think he gets to the second level really well. He in a zone scheme, I think is going to be so, so great. Again, my main knock on him is not being like a super massive displacement guy because he's not as big in the size thing. He's not you know, he's not 6'5". He doesn't need to be. But as you mentioned here, I think he is a zone-specific center. Um, if he bulks up and maybe adds a little bit more power to him, which I don't even know if I really want him to do that. That might limit his ability to move. But I'm a really big fan of Luke Whipler. I, I gave him a, a top 100 grade. I was that big of a fan of him. Nice, nice. Yeah, no, I mean, he's, he's a good football player. Like I said, he moves really well. We'll see with the power profile, how that develops. But, like, this is where the, this is where the NFL is really kind of – shifting to right like that's why you know the the kid that came out of iowa last year whose name's escaped me for some reason uh, tyler, tyler linderbaum. linderbaum and mm -hmm. the garrett bradbury's and david andrews like that's why those type of center keeps popping up more and more like they're losing the size profile as much as they, they used to have but now they're really honing in on like man we need guys that move we need guys that can work up to the second level that's what luke whipler is to me man so yeah number four for me um, just a good football player in general. Yeah, and especially in the modern NFL when we have to chase down faster and faster linebackers and sometimes defensive backs playing linebacker, I, I want good athletes in the interior, especially at center, yep. because it's underrated, possibly one of the most important positions on the field that doesn't get talked about enough. Uh, my number four, though, is one of the darlings of this class, John Michael Schmitz from Minnesota. Whoa! Uh, I, Whoa. I I was a, my projection on him is a little bit more optimistic than I had at the beginning of this cycle. I have a, a top 100 grade, or just outside my top 100 as a second round pick uh, for him. What we get with John Michael Schmitz is the epitome of consistency. You know what you're getting from John Michael Schmitz every single rep: good technique, good placement, good positioning. I don't think that he is an elite athlete or like even like a great, great athlete. He's a good athlete. And that's what helps him succeed with technique placement coupled with him being able to move enough behind that understanding of angles and how to win in various reps. And we saw that at the senior bowl, we saw him just play with really good footwork, a really good base, a uh, really good leg drive. That's what excites people about John Michael Schmitz. And I really do believe that John Michael Schmitz is going to be a starting center at the next level. I think he's got everything that you need. My only negative on him, he's an older player, and I think that he is as close to a finished product as he's going to be. I, I don't see anything physically for me that I'm like, wow, this guy, give him a little bit of time, and he's going to be even better than he is right now. I think he's at where he's going to get, and that's what we've talked about a lot with John Michael Schmitz and why I try to remain cool compared to, I think, the rest of uh, the NFL draft media out there. I just don't want to give a huge amount of stock and put him as my top-ranked center if he's a finished product. He's going to start. He's going to be a good starter, but I think there's more upside from some other guys that I have ranked. It's interesting, Joe. I'm a little higher on John Michael Schmitz than you are, man. So I don't want to say how much higher, but a little, a little bit higher. Uh -oh. A little bit higher. <laughs> just a little bit. Well, but give your thoughts on John, John Michael Schmitz as we kind of the way we usually do this, and then we'll get to where you have him. Right. I, I don't think he's as good as athlete as a couple of players on this list. I, I don't. But I what I think that John Michael Schmitz does really well is that his angles that he takes as a mover is fantastic. You know, like he's able to cut guys mm -hmm. off because I think that his he's just pristine from a technical perspective. 
And man, his power profile is the best of any player on this list, in my opinion, that I have at least, man. When he sits down on power, it's cut off. Like it is absolutely mm. cut off. He's got that physical style where at Minnesota, he was able to do some gap stuff, some power stuff, but he was also to work some inside outside zone. He's, I think he's just a good player all around. And I just don't think there's many holes in his game. Like, is he an exceptional athlete? I agree. I don't think he's a great athlete, but I think functionally he's a good athlete for the position. And he, more than anything, he makes up for a lack of athleticism with the fact that that he's able to have that great ability to cut off and great ability to take angles. I just think that this kid's a really good center at the next level, man. Like I think he's going to play early, and I think he's going to be a really good player. I think the consistency is, is something that we really need to hone in on at the center position, and I think that's what John Michael Schmitz brings to the table. Yeah, I think consistency is definitely important, and it kind of comes down to the age-old argument of why get excited over traits at offensive line when we've got a guy who just always blocks somebody he's yes. always getting his his job done and he's succeeding i think it's it's definitely more nuanced than that and i know you agree with that yeah. um and again i understand the value of john michael schmitz i think my counterpoint to you, to you saying that you're higher on john, john michael schmitz than i am yeah I think I'm higher on the center class overall. Than I, you I think you are. That's my counterpoint. I think you are. Like, I liked Luke Whipler, but I feel like you are, like, <laughs> really high on Luke Whipler. Like, that's what I feel like right now. I'm actually not that high on Luke Whipler because he is my third, third-ranked third guy. So it's not like I'm, like, crazy high on him. I don't think there's much separation between these two. I have, in my eyes, John Michael Schmitz as a late second, early third, and then Luke Whipler as uh, a second-round pick. I see him as a second round pick, no higher. My center ranked. Wait, wait, no, wait. We need to get to your number thirty guy, number third guy. My number three guy, yes, is Joe Titman from Wisconsin, who I like a lot. Man, he's got a really funky build though for a center. I mean, he's listed at six foot, mm. not listed. He was verified at six foot six and three hundred thirteen pounds with an eighty and three eighth inch wingspan. So his arm length wasn't great, but like his his full wingspan was actually pretty good. For the center position, man, you don't see guys that are usually that big. And I know when he was asked the combine about like playing with leverage, playing with pad level, he admitted that that's something that he worked. He has to work on a lot because he's just naturally a little bit higher as a six foot six guy, you know. So, but I really the athleticism is what sells it for me on Joe Tippman, man. That kid mm-hmm. moves exceptionally well. I can argue. I, I was honestly a little surprised, Joe. I don't know if you felt this way, but I was surprised that Wisconsin didn't try to play him as like a tackle. I mean, honestly, as as a college offensive tackle, because he has the skill set to play offensive tackle in college. Like, there's no doubt. I remember when I was talking to Lorenz about him in the preseason. Lorenz also likes him a lot, but Lorenz is like, "Why don't they play him at like right tackle with that length?" And I'm like, "Yeah, man, I'm not really sure why." But regardless, he is a really nice athlete, crisp. He has good hand violence, I believe. I think there's decent pop in his hands, but I mean, athleticism, length. He's got range as a blocker. All that stuff is really nice. I think his power profile is solid. I just think that the the power profile is hurt a little bit just for the simple fact that his center of gravity is so high because he's such a taller center. But I think he's a starting caliber player at the next level, which is why I have him as a third overall player, and I have a, a late two on him. So I think he's a firm second-round type of player. I'm very high on Joe Tittman. I really, really like Joe Tittman, who is my second-ranked center, who I almost bulldozed my way into talking about. Uh, Tittman, though, what I love about him, you're right. The size is a little odd because he's as big as he is, and maybe he could play guard. Well, so that's part of my argument here is that I think that Tippman can play guard at the next level if he's asked to. So that positional versatility is a positive. What I got excited about with that size is how easily he moves for that size. He does not look like a 6'6", 315-pound center the way that he's able to move. I also thought that like the displacement power and the strength that he possesses the natural strength that he has and brings to the position is really fun. It's really exciting, exciting. And there are a couple of times where like, I really saw him put, you know, really take somebody out of a play because of the power that he brings to the position. So I think with all those physical traits, that's good enough for me to take him early on in the second round as my second rank center. The only drawback and you kind of hit on it is that his positioning and his angles they're not great. I see somebody who's still getting comfortable with playing the position at a high level, and he might take a little bit of time before he reaches his potential. 
but he still has a lot of really good film out there that I'm not too worried that it, at the very least of what product he puts out now is going to be quality play uh, in his rookie season. I will say one thing that also excited me is I noticed when he is out of position and he does make a mistake and he's not in the greatest spot, his flexibility is great and his length allows for him to redirect easily and recover easily. So that's one of the big things why I have him ranked where he is and ahead of uh, John Michael Schmitz, who I assume is your number two guy. John Michael Schmitz is my number two guy. Joe, quick, quick uh, one here. Ready? The he would yeah. be Joe Tittman is um, one of only one, two, three, four, five, six centers ever since 1999 that were six, six or taller. Literally only six guys that are that tall, which is pretty funny. Crazy. It's not a great list either, man. Of like the other guys that are listed here. Uh, Chad Wheeler's one from USC. Mike Deggery out of Florida. I don't even know who that is. Eric Cook out of New Mexico. Don't know who that is. Graham Glasgow's good one. He's a good player. Yep. And Ethan, Frank Ethan Posick out of uh, Posick. 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 However we pronounce his name. Yeah. So not, it was kind of stiff, though. Yeah. I don't know if not, not a great list, but regardless, I think that we're both high. Because Ragnow was on there, right? Or was he 6'5? Right now, 6'5. He's 6'5. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. But regardless, a little bit of an outlier, I guess, as far as him being a taller center. But yeah, John Michael Schmitz. Sorry. my You know how my brain works sometimes, man. John Michael Schmitz. I already talked about a little bit, but a lot actually. He is just so physical, man. So dependable. I feel like mm. Joe Tittman definitely has a higher upside than John Michael Schmitz. I would not argue against that at all. But the floor, I think, is considerably higher, man. Like I think John Michael oh, Schmitz yeah. is the guy that like you throw in there day one. It's just like good player, man. Like what are you going to say about it? Like there's just not a lot of holes in his game as far as. Take proper angles, physical, dependable, a lot of years of experience. Just going to be a good starting center, man. I had a, I had a solid second-round grade on him. I think he's just a good, good football player, man. That's just all it is. Yeah, no disagreements there. Uh, again, I, I think the biggest takeaway is that I'm just more excited about this center class and those, those top four guys outside of Patterson who I was not that excited about. I have all second, uh, second round or late second round, early third round grades on all those guys. Like, I, I think that there might be a run on centers once the first guy goes. Yeah. And maybe we don't get somebody that goes in the first round. But our top guy that we both have as number one, and apparently we're the only podcast and media entity out there that is this high on Ricky Stromberg. We should try and get Ricky Stromberg on the podcast. I know it's the Ricky Stromberg. I know it's dead. Just you should hit him up. Should. You should hit him up. Hit him up. Because this is the Ricky Stromberg fanboy podcast because we love Ricky Stromberg so much. Look, it has been said multiple times on this show. I don't understand the confusion over Ricky Stromberg. I have said this before, and I said this last week, that he's the Creed Humphrey of the class. He's getting overthought or just not getting enough attention when he deserves uh, more focus as being one of the more talented players in, this, in the class. I think you can pop that. Don't know why I can't speak today. <laughs> I think if you combine... The positives of John Michael Schmitz and the positives of a Joe Tipman slash Luke Whippler, who are the younger, more athletic guys and the more technically sound guys, you get Ricky Stromberg. I get a guy who is very smart, who's got great football IQ, that knows where he needs to be, but at the same time is really freaking flexible. He moves very, very easily for his size, but most importantly, man, he's got some some great displacement power. Yes. He can really, really push some guys off the ball. He can put some guys into the ground. He's got all of that, and he's going up against the biggest dudes on the defensive line. I'm excited about Ricky Stromberg. I'm tired of overthinking him. <laughs> stop overthinking him. Please stop overthinking him, people. He, he's he, Joe, he might be the number one guy in this draft this year for me where I just don't understand why no one is talking about him as much. Because you know what's weird is every time I talk to someone about him, though, they like him. <laughs> like I haven't heard anybody that's like, hey, I don't really see it. Like I haven't heard that conversation at all. It's just for whatever reason, man, like it just isn't talked about as much. But – Profile six foot three and an eighth, 306 pounds, 33 and a quarter inch arms, which is that's pretty nice. Joe, you want to hear a crazy stat? Here's a crazy stat for you. Ricky Stromberg at six three and an eighth has the same exact wingspan as Joe Titman does at six foot six. Same exact uh, wingspan. Nuts. And he tested like a phenomenal athlete, man. Like five two six in the 40 isn't great. 
I mean, it's solid, but like he tested really well from a explosiveness perspective. Like he did all that stuff. That, and he's only 20. He didn't do yeah. He didn't do any of the agility drills, did he? I don't think he did the agility drills, but he did all the explosive stuff. And I'm just like mm-hmm. broad jump and everything. I'm just like, yeah, man, kick could play, brother. And I think his 10-yard split was really good too, if I remember. And then he goes in the the field drills, and like I'm just I'm still I'm still pondering. I'm like, why? Are no, why is nobody talking about him? I just don't get it. I don't get it. I mean, he's a multi-year starter. I think he's a three-year starter in the SEC, has length at the position, has athleticism at the position, has strength at the position. Like, what am I missing here where people don't see him as a starter? I gave him a late first-round grade. I think he's a really good player. Same. I think he's I think he's really good. Really good player. I, I have him as a top 50 prospect um, and essentially is one of my – higher graded top 50 prospects i i would take him in the end of the first round i just i don't understand it and it's to your point i can understand the drawbacks on some of these other guys like i can understand the drawbacks of a whipler and a tipman why maybe some people would have them lower i can understand why some people would have a john michael schmitz lower because i technically have him lower because i am discounting some of his athletic ceiling but I just don't understand. I, I, it's one of the few times where I can't sit here and understand both sides of the argument. I always try to approach this with every prospect that I do or, or anything in general. I always try to find the opposite end of the argument and figure out, okay, where can we look at this? And I don't I don't see it with him. It just doesn't make any sense to me, Ryan. Uh, Joe, I mean, if, if, if you can't make sense of it, I can't make sense of it. I don't know, man. Because like again, like people fall. Stop hating. People <laughs> fall in love with the multi-year starter in the SEC stuff, right? Like they fall in love with that type of stuff. And I'm just like, he literally started three years at Arkansas, and <laughs> put out three years of really good tape. I remember I was talking about him two years ago, man. I'm like, yeah, that guy's really good. I thought he could come out as a junior, and you know, obviously he goes mm-hmm. back. Like he's a really good football player, man. I, yeah. Yeah, I, I don't know. Either I'm going to fall in the sword and be completely wrong, or I'm going to look like a genius. So one way or the other, we're going to see what the conversation is at the end. We'll see what happens at Joe DeLeon at Rise and Draft. We'll be back with more. I think tackles, offensive tackles, will be the next position group we do. Enjoy the rest of your week, folks.